It's good to be in God's house tonight, amen? amen. What a joy, what a privilege, and uh, we're praying for a good service tonight. We want most of all the Lord to be glorified in it. And uh, thank you once again to all the family members and friends that came out for our graduates. I know it means a lot to them. I know a lot of you have been to graduation ceremonies, to graduation parties, and here's another one. But I appreciate you coming out for this one as well. If you would, please take your Bibles and turn the book of Psalms, Psalm 127. Psalm 127. Before we get going in the charge tonight and then move on to the graduation portion of our ceremony, uh, I would like to say this. This was a statement that a Yale University president said to a former Ohio State president. He said, always be kind to your A and B students. Someday one of them will return to your campus as a good professor. And also be kind to your C students. How many of you were there? Someday one of them will return and build you a $2 million science laboratory. And so we understand this evening that these are times that we're going through. And we're thankful for each young person that we have. And we know that each young person in here is special. And we want to promote them tonight in such a way that we give God glory. But here at Crossroads Baptist Church, we believe in the next generation of young people rising up with a love to honor and glorify God with. Now in Psalm 127, when we look at verse number 1, here's what the Bible says. Listen carefully. The Bible says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. And certainly tonight, that would be our desire at Crossroads Baptist Church. That the Lord would build this church house. Amen. But I sure hope and pray that it's not just the desire of this congregation. I hope that it would be the desire of every single born-again child of God that they would not allow themselves to become the ruler of their household, but that they would allow the Lord to be the authority as He so desires to be. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. And graduates, can I tell you something? Especially for those senior graduates, you can spend your whole life climbing the ladder of success, only to wake up and realize one day before God that you've been climbing up the wrong building and the wrong ladder. And you're going to have to go all the way back down to get on the right one for God. I I would just challenge you right now this day to start on the right ladder for God. Amen. Climbing the success of God's will and not the will of man. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Look at verse number 2. It is vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. And so many people waste their time going after frivolous things that will not matter for eternity. Look at verse 3. Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord. And can I just say right here, I am not for abortion. Amen. I am not for bur- murdering the unborn. I'm not for murdering those that are alive. I believe that a child is an heritage of the Lord. It is a gift of God. And then look at what it says in the rest of verse 3. And the fruit of the womb is His reward. If you have a child, it is a reward from God. Don't take it for granted. Thank you, mother fathers for coming tonight. Thank you, grandmas and grandpas for coming tonight. Thank you, aunts and uncles, cousins, relatives. Thank you for coming and investing in the life of your young people. Look at what it says in verse number 4. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is the man that hath his quiver full of them. Don't put a limit on what God wants to give you. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. And I don't know about you, but according to verse number 5, I want to see some young people rise up to see their world changed by the grace of God living through their lives. Speaking with the enemies in the gates, rising to a place of authority. But I want to focus on verse number 4. The Bible says, as arrows are in the hand of the mighty man, so are the children of the youth. Anthony Wakeland tonight, one of our senior graduates, brought me one of his arrows. And he said, Pastor, I'm sorry, there's a little bit of deer hair on it, but I said, that'll be okay. It'll be just perfect for the illustration tonight. Here in the Word of God in Psalm 127, verse number 4, there's an illustration given of which I preached on a little over a year ago. 
Another one of our graduates tonight that's here with us is Mackenzie. And Mackenzie said after that message a little over a year ago that she really enjoyed it. And so that's why I'm preaching it again, Mackenzie. Tonight as we look at the graduates that we have before us, I want to not just challenge the graduates, but every single one of us from this verse. Number one tonight, I want you to see the mighty man's arrow. This evening, when you get a picture of a mighty man in your mind, you think of someone that scales walls, cuts down trees with the greatest of ease, someone who knows how to use a slingshot and a bow and arrow in the Bible, someone who knows how to take a spear and thrust it hard and thrust it far. And as we look at a mighty man, we're going to have to understand that there's an illustration about how a mighty man takes an arrow and begins to put it together. For those of you that understand, this arrow did not just come like this. This arrow was not created like this, but it took someone as a craftsman to put this thing together. Am I correct? And I want to paint a picture for you for just a second concerning those who parent their children. As we look at the Word of God today, we have to understand that every one of our graduates and every child in here and everyone who's ever been born, which I suggest that's probably everyone in this room, you were fashioned by those that birthed you into this world. You were fashioned by those who took leadership and authority in your life. Somebody somewhere molded you as you were a pliable youth in their hand. And I want to ask you a question. How did you turn out? There's three different areas I want to point out about this arrow. First of all, we have the shaft. Then we have the feathers. And then we have the arrowhead, as we're going to call it tonight. When you think about a mighty man in the Bible, he didn't have the privilege of going to Walmart, to going to Gander Mountain, to going to Bass Pro Shop, and he couldn't pick out the shaft he liked with the right lineup of feathers and the right colors. He couldn't pick up a tip. He couldn't decide if he wanted this one or that one or one that glows in the dark. He didn't have a choice like that. He had to go out and find a stick, first of all, and take that stick and mold it and make it into the arrow that would soar through the air. And if you want an arrow that's going to do something, that's going to be productive in your life to either take out the enemy or get you some food for the next the next day, you're going to have to take a stick and begin to put some work to it. You're going to have to take the bark and you're going to have to cut off the bark that's on it. You're then going to have to take those rough edges, those knots that are all over the shaft, and you're going to have to begin to whittle those knots away. And can I say something, young people? None of us start off like a sleek, sheer, straight staff that a mighty man would use. We all have our roughness to us. We all have our bumps. We all have our knots. And some of us come out a little bit crooked. But a good mighty man, he knows how to take a stick and begin to mold it and to fashion it into how he would have it to be. And when it comes to an arrow that might be a little bit crooked, there's ways of straightening that out. And I want to use an illustration with my grandpa and with my brother of so many years ago. Now, when, when we were little, my grandma and my grandpa would both teach my brother and I some things. My grandma would teach myself piano lessons while my brother was learning to work with wood with my grandpa. And we're very thankful for the things that we learned. With my grandpa, we learned how to make some shelves, learned how to make some birdhouses. We learned how to work on the wood lathe and carve out some toothpick holders and some candlestick holders. We learned how to make some things with our hands with grandpa. Well, there's this one project that my brother and I used to always like to make where we would carve out out of wood. We would whittle an, whittle an arrow. And in that arrow we would make the feather, we would make the shaft, we would make the arrow head. But before we whittled it to how we wanted it, we would leave it with a little bit of blunt edge on either end of the arrow head. Then here's what we had to do. We were making a heart and drilling a hole through it and the purpose was to put the arrow through the skinny hole of that heart. But listen, you cannot get the arrowhead thickness through the hole of that heart without first making the arrowhead a little bit smaller. To do that, we would have to soak the arrowhead into water all night and into the next day. We were making that arrowhead soft. We were making it moldable. Then we would pull that piece of wood out and we would put that piece of wood into some a vice. And we'd squeeze that vice. You know what a vice is, don't you? A vice is two pieces of metal that as you rotate the lever... It begins to squeeze something as far as you want it or hold it tight. And we would do that to the arrowhead. And we would flatten the arrowhead down as thin as the shaft is. That way when we took the arrowhead out, we could stick it through the 
hole in that heart and then after time the water would come out of it, the moisture, and that arrowhead would pop right back out and we'd whittle it out. I tell you what, it did not come except by immersing it in water, putting it through some pressure of the vice, and then knocking off the rough edges. When it comes down to you being a mighty man's arrow, please understand this young person. You're going to have to immerse yourself in the water of the Word of God. You're going to have to learn to soak up the Scriptures. And it's only then when you soak up the Scriptures that you'll be able to pour out the Word of God to others who need to hear what the Word of God has to say. I'm very thankful for some of our graduates. I'm thankful for their testimony. I'm thankful for how they love the Lord. But can I tell you this, graduates? It may be easy now in life to be submersed with the Word of God and to share with others what God is doing. But there will come a time in your life where the vice grips of life are going to begin squeezing you. I want to ask you a question. Are you going to bow out on God when life's vice grip begins pressuring you? Are you going to want to run away when times get tough and the world begins to tell you, ah, that Bible, it doesn't really mean anything. It wasn't true. Just like they're trying to tell you that the Nazis didn't kill Jews in schools now. They're going to try to tell you the Bible isn't true. But can I tell you what, my friend? Is that going to cause you to waver? Or is that going to cause you to remain strong and stand for, with fervor for God? There's going to be some pressure. There's going to be some things that you're going to have to whittle off of your life if you want to turn out right for God. A mighty man's arrow, man, it takes precision and skill. The feathers, man, they had to be put on in such a way and just like three of them specifically, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they had to be allowed on that arrow in such a way that when you pull back in that bow and you let that thing fly, the feathers are going to direct that arrow in the way straightest to the target. This evening we have the mighty man's arrow and as arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Can I ask you, are you an arrow that's going to fly straight? But then secondly tonight, I want you to see the mighty man's aim. In the Bible, it tells us of some mighty men. And they could take a slingshot left-handed and they could hit the target within a hair's breadth every time. You know what it takes to hit the target every time? What's it take? It takes practice. That's exactly right. And my friends, if you're going to turn out right for God, you're going to have to start living for God today and you're going to have to decide that every day of your life you want to live for the Lord. This morning in Sunday school we talked about it. The Bible says, Jesus said, if ye love me, keep my commandments. That's simply the word of Jesus Christ. Well, one of the commandments that is in the Bible is this. Hebrews chapter 10 verse number 25. Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another in so much the more as ye see the day approaching. You know what the Bible says? If ye love me, keep my commandments. We could say it like this, according to Hebrews 10.25, stay in church and stay in fellowship with other believers. Don't get away from where you're supposed to be because within the fellowship of God's people, your joy can be full. You know what the book of 1 John chapter number 1 says? It says that if we have fellowship with God and fellowship with each other, our joy is going to be full. You know, I have a joy tank. And you have a joy tank too. And the reason you may become grumpy in life and miserable in life as a believer is because you've forgotten two important things. Fellowship with God and fellowship with others. You can put yourself in solitude in a cabin in Alaska. You can spend all the time with God that you could and things would be great and grand, but oh, for that fellowship with a believer that you so desperately need. You can come to church and spend time week after week with each other and then go back home and never spend time with God and you're missing out. The aim of a mighty man was right for the bullseye every time. If ye love me, keep my commandments. You know another thing the Bible says? Wine is a mocker and strong drink is raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. Anthony, do not let the world fool you into thinking that drinking is okay. Brittany, you the same. You're stepping out into a life that is unlike the one you are in. And Jesus says, if ye love me, keep my commandments. We can 
could get going tonight, but the reason why we do what we do as God's people is not because there's a standard or there's a rule, but it's because we simply love God. That's the motive of why we do what we do. A mighty man's arrow, a mighty man's aim, and then can I say this, a mighty man's accuracy. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. And can I say this simply as I begin to close? Anthony, you've had some parents in your life that have taken the arrow of your life, they've put you into the bow, they've lined you up, and they're about ready to launch you out into adulthood. And can I tell you, they've planted their feet... They have made their aim to the target and they're going to let the arrow fly. But you know what the truth is about your life, Anthony? You can choose as to whether or not you're going to go according to the, path, the course and the position that your parents have set up for you. You have a choice. This arrow, I understand, does not, once it's gone, the wind could come, the wind could blow. There could be obstructions in the parents' eyes for what they see. Now you have a choice as an arrow that's flying through the air with the greatest of ease. Do I head for the target of my own making or do I head for the target of God, Miss Brittany? The Bible says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Surely you've heard of Charlie Brown, haven't you? And his nemesis, Lucy. Charlie Brown, one day, gets his bow and arrow out. He pulls it back. He lets her fly at the fence in front of him, kind of like this one out here outside this window. The arrow flies. It sticks to the fence. It's still quivering. Charlie Brown runs over to the fence. Charlie Brown paints the bull's eye around his arrow. And he's looking at it in all proud, with all the pride he has. And he is so happy with what he's just done. He's hit the bull's eye. Lucy, his nemesis, comes up and she says, Charlie Brown, that's not how you do it. You draw the bull's eye first and then you shoot the arrow. Uh But you know what? Charlie Brown's just like most of us are nowadays. There's a target that we've set up of good things. And we'll aim at the target, the fence of whatever seems right to us or whatever the world says is right instead of Jesus Christ. I'm trying to tell you, church, the devil would rather have you do a good thing in lieu of the right thing. You have a choice as you launch from the bow to head towards the target which is Jesus Christ already predetermined I'm not living for self I'm not living for mom and dad I am living for Jesus or you have the choice of going after your own thing but it's never going to return as a very accurate shot who are you living for young person attending church tonight at Crossroads Baptist Church who are you living for What ladder of success are you climbing up? Are you going to realize once you get to the top and peek over the edge? Ah, Wrong. Back down. Up the right thing this time. For some it's going to take an act of humility. For some it's going to take something that gets your attention. I'm so thankful God got a hold of mine. But tonight I want you to think about the fact that a mighty man stands there with his arrows. He's not going to put anything in his quiver that he can just pull out at any time if it's not ready. Can I tell you something, young person? If mom and dad says you're not ready, you're not ready. The mighty man isn't going to pull out an arrow that isn't fit for battle or fit for the hunt. Amen. And likewise, mom and dad's got some wisdom, young person. Listen to them. They'll launch you out when you're ready. Let mom and dad let you know when you're ready. Don't go against them. Don't fight against God. Don't rebel. The Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. I ask you a question. How's it going? As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Young person, you ready? The ride of your life is going to be awesome. There's going to be repercussions, though, for the one who chooses to go in their own strength, own power, for their own reasons. Go for God. Amen? Let the Lord lead you. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. And lean not unto thine own understandings. In all thy ways acknowledge Him. 
and he shall direct thy paths. I don't know what I'm going to do. Don't worry, God knows exactly what he has for you. Keep walking towards him. He's the goal. He's the prize. Amen? Let's pray. Our Lord and Heavenly Father, as we bow before you this evening, we thank you for a passage of Scripture in the Psalms that challenges us, except the Lord build the house. And tonight I pray that you would build this house. These graduates, as they're ready to launch out, I pray that you would use them for your honor and for your glory. It may be that there's someone in here tonight who has never heard the name of Jesus Christ. Maybe they've heard it, used it flippantly. Maybe they've never come to the realization of their guilt before God because of their own sin. It would be my desire tonight that you'd show them the amazing grace of God that they would leave their sin and run and cling to the grace of Jesus Christ. Lord, I am asking you to convict in a way that only you can. But then for all these graduates, I pray from the youngest, the kindergartners, the eighth grades, to the seniors, I pray that you would utilize them as an arrow in the hand of a mighty man and prepare them for the hunt and prepare them for the battle, that you may be glorified with the end result of their life. We pray all this in Jesus' name. And all God's people prayed and said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening so well. I certainly appreciate it. At this time, what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, honor the graduates that were homeschooled. We're going to give them a little ceremony. And so tonight, first of all, we have Riley Relliford. And tonight, Riley Relliford would like to come sing you a song. And so if you would, would you give him your attention as he sings this song to you this evening. Okay, you can say a verse too. Oh, wonderful. Speak John, Go ahead. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So tonight we recognize Riley Relliford and his accomplishments of moving from kindergarten on to first grade this next year. At this time, we are going to have one of our eighth graders. He is, we're recognizing him tonight for celebrating his accomplishments and moving from the eighth grade to this coming year to ninth grade. And his name is Brian Smith. Uh, he's my brother. And I'm proud of him. And I'm thankful I, I get to pastor my family. I think it's a great joy and a great privilege. And, and I want you to know, church, that uh, I pray for these graduates and I pray for my brother. I just want them to turn out right for the Lord. And I hope that you'll pray with me for our young people that they will. His mom and dad, my mom and dad, have something that they want me to say to him that the world will tell you that the Bible isn't real. They will try to convince you to go in the wrong direction. There's going to be ups and there's going to be downs. But Brian, please remember that we love you 
and that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I have a diploma for junior high that we're going to give to him. So Brian, if you would come up here. We're going to give this to you at this time. I'll read it to you once he gets up here. This diploma says Smithfield Academy of Higher Education. That was... There's probably there's a story behind how that came to be, but... Smithfield Academy of Higher Education, in which he did graduate top in his class, by the way. It says this certifies that Brian Christopher Smith has completed the mandatory requirements and is thereby presented with this junior high diploma given on June 1st, 2014. And then it says Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 on it. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding and all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. And so there you go, Brian. joy also to announce this next homeschool graduate, which is Brittany Leach. When uh, her family came to Crossroads Baptist Church, I was overjoyed to have them, but Brittany at that time was not with uh, her family. She was away. And uh, very, very privileged at that time to keep communication with Miss Leach and to try to encourage her and oftentimes when I tried to be encouragement to her by letter she was an encouragement to me and uh, it is with great joy as well that we hand this diploma to you but first at this time Miss Brittany has something that she would like to come and say so Miss Brittany if you would would you come Life lies before you like a field of driven snow. Be careful how you tread it, for every step will show. Author unknown. Right when I read this poem, I immediately realized how true it was. The decisions we make after high school will one day reflect on our lives, whether they be good or bad. Jeremiah 29:11 is my life verse. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. I've come to realize that the decision I have made in the past have greatly affected my life today. There was a time in my life when I was running from God. It wasn't until I realized that the way I was living was getting me nowhere that I came to the end of myself and let God take control of my life. Amen. Things work out so much better when you let God get in control of your life. That's right. If it weren't for God, I wouldn't be where I am today. If you have a trusted Christ with your life, you are missing out on a happiness that I believe everyone should have. I'm planning to go to Pensacola Christian College this fall to study criminal justice and hopes to be on the police force one day. I will be minoring in art because I would like to further my ability to service the Lord in that field. I would like to thank my parents for having me in church my whole life and for giving me a Christian education all the way through my schooling. Yeah, man. I would also like to thank my other family members who have invested in me over the years aunts, uncles, cousins, and grandparents, and to my friends I have met since my family has attended Crossroads. Thank you for your kind spirit. Not everyone can say they have a church family like this one. You are truly a blessing. I think it would be safe to say that I have tested several people's patience over the years. (laughs) But we made it through, and no one killed anyone. (laughs) Please pray that we will follow the Lord's leading and that I will always desire His will as I begin this new chapter in my life. Take a seat right there. It's okay. You're all right. It's okay. My wife told me I could come up and do this. If I promise, I wouldn't cry. I may not get through. <laughs> Brittany, 
on your face that worried look I see, as if to say, Dad, please don't embarrass me. <clears throat> I remember the day you were born. I really wanted a boy, but when I saw your beautiful face and eyes, I cried really big tears of joy. I knew the Lord had sent us this little girl from above for us to teach her, nurture her, and she bore so much love. I often, I often think about the day when you were six. You broke your arm in two. It wasn't your fault, just a disagreement between the jungle gym and you. <clears throat> your mom and I had a real hard time that day, especially when we saw the doctor's bills we had to pay. <clears throat> Let's fast forward to when you were 16 and ready to drive a car. <clears throat> we said if you pass the driver's ed, you will not be going far. <laughs> so you pass the driver's ed and they gave you a permit. <clears throat> that meant you would no longer sit around the house like a hermit. <laughs> <laughs> the day you laid your eye on I'm sorry, the day you laid your eyes on your car, you said, Dad, that's really cool. I believe I said, here are the keys. Be responsible and don't drive like a fool. Now, I want to talk about the most important day of your life, you see. <clears throat> this, is a <clears throat> this is the day we will all remember forever. Your sisters, your mother, your great big family, and me. This is the day you ask Christ into your heart. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. From that day forward, you and he will never be apart. <clears throat> As you move on with your life, I want you to share your salvation story. Even when you're 60, you're 80, or even 140. <clears throat> you have now reached a milestone in your life, which leads you one step closer to making someone a godly wife. I really feel deepest sympathy for that man when he is introduced to the whole leech clan. <clears throat> As you graduate from high school, please take a chance to reflect on all those who have helped you in life and have gained your respect. <clears throat> your mom and I are so proud of what you have become. I hope you know you're surrounded by so much love. <clears throat> One last thing before I stop talking tonight. When you leave for college, there may be a little fright. When we deliver you to college, I'm sure we'll cry lots of tears. But that is to be expected after all these wonderful years. <clears throat> we wish you the best and pray that God will be with you, even when you are eating that college food that tastes like the leather from your shoe. <laughs> your sisters, your mom, and I love you, Brittany. Remember my favorite verse, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. We love you. All right, Miss Brittany Leach, if you would come up here. I have your certificate of graduation. Certificate of graduation states this is to certify that Brittany K. Leach has successfully, I apologize, <laughs> completed the course of study at Leach Homeschool, awarded the first day of June 2014, location Crossroads Baptist Church, Justin Smith, pastor. Congratulations. going to do it this time before we dismiss to uh, downstairs. I'd like to get a picture with all the graduates. I'm going to recognize them as I call them up and I have a little gift for them. Nothing much, but a little bit. And uh, also some candy involved with that little gift as well. And uh, so I'm looking forward to handing these things out. Thank you everyone for being patient with us tonight. This is a special evening for those that are here with us. Uh, the first thing that I would like to do is I would like to once again welcome Riley Relaford and go ahead, come on up, and Noah Leach. If you guys would come, stand right there. 
I love their hats. I believe these were made by... Come over here on this side, Noah. I believe these were made by Noah's grandma. Is this correct? Yeah, so they look wonderful. And so let's get a picture. Let's smile. All right. Now, Noah Leach graduated from El Vista Baptist Academy and not too many days ago himself. And so we want to congratulate Noah and Riley. So let's give them a round of applause on their accomplishments. All right. We got this for you. It's the story of Noah activity book and a card. And then Pastor went shopping today. So I'm sorry, Mom and Dad, but I got some cotton candy for them. Oh, yes. So let's give a round of applause again. Good job. All right. If I could have you guys step over here for just a second. How about go sit in the first pew? We're going to call you back up here in just a second, and we're going to take a picture. All right. Now, if I could have Brian Smith come back up. And then if I could have Mackenzie up, as well as Cheyenne. And these are our eighth grade graduates. And I believe it's Norwood. Right? Yeah. And is there a full name to it or just Norwood? Elementary. Norwood Elementary. And congratulate them on their graduation from 8th grade moving on to ninth grade, which that means you'll be going to which high school? Limestone next year. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and give these 8th grade graduates a round of applause for their accomplishments. Let's go ahead and get a picture together if anybody wants a picture. I guess smile, okay? Where do we look? <laughs> the digital age. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, let's see. Let's make sure I get this right. This one is for Brian Smith. And we have, I have some books coming, some things I want to give to you guys that just aren't here yet. These are just a couple journals that we got for you as well as some cards. Brian and Anthony already received cards from us. And yep, there we go. There's yours, Mackenzie. And then Cheyenne. Make sure you get the right one. Let's give them a round of applause again. And then if you guys want to pick out some candy too. There we go. All right. And we'll get a picture of all of us in just a second. But if I could welcome Miss Brittany Leach back up and then Anthony, if you'd like to come. And of course, Miss Brittany is one of our high school homeschool graduates. And Anthony Wakeland is a graduate from Peoria Heights. And so we're congratulating them this evening. Let's go ahead and give them a round of applause this evening. And then, Anthony, this is from your mother. She wanted me to read this to you tonight. Okay. It says, Anthony, I want you to know that we all are so proud of you for graduating high school and all of your hard work. This senior year was very busy for you with taking welding classes at night, working, and also doing some Bible studies with Pastor Justin. I never once heard you complain about what a busy schedule you had. Uh, now that you graduated, you have three big decisions uh, are, you are waiting on to start your career. I know it's taking some time waiting on them to call you. I just don't want you to get discouraged because we all know God has the perfect time for everything. He has big plans for you. I can't wait to see where God takes you with your career. In your future, I can also see you being in a ministry serving God. Anthony, I just want you to know that I am so thankful for you sharing that great message from church a year ago. Just with your sharing God's good words, Bryce and I got saved. Bryce and I got saved. We are so thankful. 
not only am I thankful for us, but all of your friends that you have guided to God. I believe you just lead, I believe you just led someone to salvation this week while out fishing. I am just so proud to call you my son. I never thought graduation would come so fast, but just remember you will always be our baby boy. Once again, we are very proud and love you very much. Love mom and family. Let's give him a round of applause. Let's get a picture. Let's get a picture. All right. Very good. And let me get, go ahead and give these to you guys as well. And like I told them, there's a book on its way that we'd like to give you as well. So if you guys would take a seat for just a second. For those older ones... I want to read this to you. And the importance of journals. That's how we know a lot about some people. On the night of his graduation from medical college, Dr. Howard A. Kelly, world-famed surgeon and gynecologist, wrote in his diary, I dedicate myself, my time, my capabilities, my ambition, everything to him, the Lord. Bless the Lord. Uh, Sanctify me to thy uses. Give me to no worldly success, which may not lead me nearer to my Savior. And I'm thankful for men like that that pin down what God's been doing in their heart. And so I want to challenge you, young ladies especially, young men, take some time. Mark down what God's doing in your life and challenge yourself to live more for Him. If you want to set those to the side, okay, I know it's a fun workbook, no, O'Reilly, but we can set that to the side right now. now. Let's come get a picture. So if you want to put those things down, we'll come get a picture and then we will pray and we will be dismissed. <laughs> and Brittany and Anthony, if you want to pick out some candy too, you may. Let's have you guys get in the front right here. All right. Now let's all just kind of circle around them. Kind of come in. There you go. Let's scoot down this way a little bit to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. You're fine. <laughs> Big kids. All right. Let's give them a round of applause again and congratulations to our graduates. Good job, good job, good job. All right, take some time after the service to go around and thank our graduates. If I could have all the graduates, go right back in the hallway back there by your tables. And so people can congratulate you as you go out. That would be a wonderful thing. And if the moms want to go with the younger ones, it's perfectly fine as well. But we're going to go ahead and have a word of prayer for the fellowship that we're about to enjoy. And please listen, if you did not know that there was a fellowship tonight and you didn't bring anything, or if you knew and you didn't bring anything, please don't let that be your excuse for leaving. We've got plenty of food down there, plenty of cake, and we would hate it for you to go on your way without enjoying it with us. I, I want to thank the Wakelands and the Ike Myers and several in here, some I don't even know by name, that provided a lot of the food for us tonight. Thank you, and thank you for every individual individual that brought something as well. You're a blessing. So we're going to enjoy this time together. Let's go ahead and stand and we'll close with a word of prayer and we shall be dismissed.